banded free Nigerian police intelligence officers after 30 million naira ransom. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. The Gazette had on Saturday reported the abduction of two officers who were on an investigation, investigation assignment to control Kogishti from the capital, Abuja. Police Superintendent Francis Yisa and Assistant Superintendent John Keffers were released by the abductors after about 30 million naira ransom was paid in secret negotiation between the armed bandits and police chiefs worried about the lives of their colleagues. People gathered learned from police sources. Inspector General Usman Baba Al Kalai, who was initially reluctant to deploy needed resources to free the officers, swung into action following the Gazette report of the matter. The Gazette on, had on Saturday reported the abduction of the officers who were on an assignment, investigation assignment between Abuja and Kogi. Mr. Jisa and Kefas were released on Sunday morning after payment was made to their captors. The sourcing and payments of a ransom were arranged by senior police officers who feared for the safety of their colleagues days after Inspector General Osman Baba Okali failed to discuss any operational plans for rescue. Officials said under anonymity to avoid being targeted for unauthorized disclosure of internal police crisis. Police authorities have refused to comment on the development since the matter came to light. Sussi said the Gazette report thwarted Mr. Alkali's effort to continue the abduction of the servicemen. The officers have since been united, reunited with their family members. Although they were said to be slightly emaciated and traumatized for the days spent in captivity, it was unclear whether the officers would be asked to return to Kogi to complete the assignment. A, policeman's, a police spokesman did not return a request seeking comment. Abduction of servicemen has become a frequent feature in dangerous tales of insecurities under the Buhari regime. Ten police officers returning from election duty were abducted in the Kogi state. The central Nigerian stretch between Kogi and the Federal Capital Territory has become a haven for violent criminals in recent times. The Buhari regime has said it recently intensified efforts to provide resources to security and law enforcement agencies in order to curb rising insecurity which has crippled businesses and education across the country. Now, first of all, let me tell you people something. Eh? Let me uh, tell you people. Do you know that all those stories of people being abducted and they are demanding for 10, 20, 30, hundreds of millions of naira? Do you know that it's the federal government that gave these people this information? That gave these people this courage. Before you, you know, you skin me alive, hear me out. When the first attack was made, what happened? Before these people even started abducting people. Look, I said, in the presence of more, in the presence of crimes, what happens? More crime thrives. If you are reluctant to discipline a particular child, be it your child or the child of your neighbor, because you feel he or she is too small. I bet you maybe what you're seeing the child doing is just maybe his mother is going to clean up the place. He'll come and mess it up. From that stage, she will develop into doing something more, you know, that is more messier. From messing the whole place up, maybe he takes what does not belong to him. And they say, oh, leave him as a child. It's just at home. And he goes to school. And, you know, before, he's, before you know it, he starts bringing things that are not his home. I know he's just a child, it does not mean, I'm sure it does not mean to so maybe he forgot to return them. And you know, before you know, that child grows into a thief and a criminal. And is now a nuisance to both the family and to the society. That is what we are talking about. When these people came in and they began to kidnap people, hmm, the first mistake they made was paying them money. Or paying them money and allow them to go. Paying them money and allowing them to go free. There is no way. They don't want to tell me that the police do not have a way of getting these people to release their people, even without the money, or after paying the money, track them down and make sure these people are dealt with for life. Come on now. I mean, it's just that to me, anytime I read something like this, that they paid money to them and they release them, I feel <laughs> this is a way of the government, you know, paying them, you know, forward for what is going to happen.
Yes, I sincerely have this feeling in my mind that the government is in support of whatever insecurities we are having in the countries. Now, I'm sincerely convinced because the late <laughs> the ancestor of all, permit me to use, I'm sorry, the ancestor of all corrupt, corrupt leaders, he came out to say that, um, you know, any insurgency of any nation that lasts for more than 24 to 48 to 72 hours, I don't know which particular time frame he used. But he said, you know, that any insurgency that lasts for, you know, 24 or 48 to 72 and, you know, it is unable to be resolved, that the government of that day has a hand in it. How? I've said it before. Just like there's Russia and there's Ukraine. Russia will be fighting Ukraine. Ukraine will be fighting Russia. This is going to be a fair battle until a member from Russia eh, is able to penetrate Ukraine's, you know, a member from there and maybe before you know one of them started giving down their information that will make to russia to gain more you know russia start using that person to gain more information and know how to weaken ukraine the more or vice versa the same thing ukraine maybe is able to you know go into russia and you know penetrate them and get somebody to start get giving them information about russia before you know what will happen you see Ukraine automatically, we could not beat water water, we start, you know, gaining grounds against Russia. That is what is going to happen. So if really, really these bandits are what I call our enemies, do you know what will happen? Well, we doubt with that they're supposed to. But the government is not doing this. It's not doing it at all. If the police could not successfully and confidently secure the release of their men without paying ransom, what then is the face of the bloody civilians? My dear, exactly. You can ask this question 1,000 times again because me, I've asked this question over and over and over again. Why we cannot undermine the relentless efforts of a noble ones amongst the security agencies still? The safety of every Nigeria is solely in God's hands. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Bandit free police officers with the ransom of 30 million men and security officers cannot protect themselves from bandits who will protect the citizens. They even threaten to kidnap the president. No one is safe in this country, and some Nigerians still want to vote for this party's continuity. My dear, that's a choice for them. I know that's why I always say I understand that frustration, but the thing is, you're practicing democracy, and the democracy you're practicing says everyone has the right to choose whoever. They are voting for. All right. On this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come here next time, enjoy the rest of your day.